The auction was over now and everyone was preparing to go home. The sow was loaded into the milk cart and lame Lotta was allowed to travel there too, although Emil's father glared at her sitting quietly in the box. It was decided that Rolla, the cow, should plod along behind, but no one had asked her what she thought about such an arrangement. Perhaps you've heard about angry bulls, but do you know about wild cows? Well, if you don't, I can tell you that when a cow gets really wild, the other animals tremble at the knees, and even the fiercest of them run away and hide. Rolla had always been the gentlest and best-behaved cow you could imagine, but when Alfred and Lena tried to drive her out onto the road to take her back to Cuttelt, she kicked her hind legs high and ran off, giving such a hideous bellow that everyone at the auction was petrified. Perhaps she had seen the farm lads fighting and thought that that's what you were supposed to do at an auction and wanted to join in. At any rate, she had gone stark raving mad and it was impossible to get nearer. Alfred tried first, then Emil's father, but Rolla charged towards them with wild eyes flashing and lowered horns bellowing furiously, and both Alfred and Emil had to run like hares to get away. Several others tried to help, but Rolla wasn't going to have anyone in her pasture, and she chased them all out. What a drama, said Lena, as she washed first the Bakorva farmer, then the Kratstop farmer, then the Narschult farmer, and then the Baseful farmer, and then Bultney Bow, all run for their lives with Rolla at their heels. Finally, Emil's father began to rave too, and shouted, Eighty Grona, I've given for that infernal cow, and what she needs is shooting. Fetch a gun, someone. He shuddered as he said it, but he knew that a mad cow was no use to anyone. Everyone else knew it too. And so the Bakova farmer fetched his loaded gun and handed it to Emil. You'd better do it yourself, he said. But Emil shouted, no, no, wait a minute. I've already told you that he was a smart boy. He went up to his father and said, if you're really going to shoot her, you might just as well give her to me. Well, what do you want with a mad cow? said Emil's father. You want to hunt lions with it? But Emil's father knew that Emil was good with animals, so he said that if Emil could get Rolla home to Cattled, she would be Emil's cow forever, start raving mad or not. Then Emil went to the baseful farmer, the one who had bought the other six cows, and said, How much will you pay me to drive the cows as far as Cattled? Well, the baseful farm was at the other end of the parish, and baseful farmer knew it wasn't going to be any joke to drive six cows ahead of him all that way, so he promptly took a 25 oar piece from his pocket. Here, he said, take this. And then this is what Emil did. He ran right across the cow pasture, past Rollo, into the farmyard and untied the cows which were tied there. And when he drove them towards Rolla, she stopped in the middle of a bellow, cast her eyes down, obviously ashamed of her bad behaviour. But what does a poor cow do when forced to go away alone and leave her old farmyard and all the other cows that she has always been with? Well, she gets frightened and upset, but only Emil had understood that. Now Rolla trotted along as nice as you please with the other cows out into the road, and everyone at the auction laughed and said, that cattle boy, boy isn't so dumb after all. And Alfred laughed too. Ha <laughs> ha! Animal owner, Emil Svensson. Now you have a horse, a lame hen and a mad cow. Are you sure you wouldn't like any more animals? In time, I sh shall certainly have more, said Emil calmly. Emil's mother was standing at the kitchen window, watching for her family return, and her eyes nearly popped out of her head when she saw the steady procession coming towards down the road. First came the milk cart with Emil's father and Alfred and Lena and the sow and lame Lotta, who was clucking excitedly over an egg she had just laid. Then came seven cows in a long row, and last of all riding on Lucas, Emil, who was keeping the cows neatly in line with the bread shovel. Emil's mother rushed out with little Ida at her heels. Seven cows, she shrieked at Emil's father. Who's gone crazy now? You or me? No, the cow, mumbled Emil's father. But he had to mumble a more detailed explanation before Emil's mother understood everything that had happened at the auction. And then she looked fondly at Emil. Bless you, Emil. But how could you have guessed that only a few minutes ago my bread shovel broke in half when I was putting the loaves into the oven? but she shrieked when she saw Alfred's nose, which was twice the size, as usual. Where did you get that nose, she said. At the Bakova auction, ne and next Saturday I'm going to take it to another auction at Narschult. Lena climbed gloomily down from the milk cart. All her flirting and giggling were over. 
What a sour-looking face, said Emil's mother. What's the matter with you? Toothache, replied Lena dully. The crossed-up farmer had offered her lots of sweets, which had given her such a bad toothache that her head felt ready to burst. But toothache or not, she had to go straight out into the meadow and milk the cattle cows, for it was long past milking time. It was also long past milking time for Roller and the other cows that had come from the auction, and they mooed loudly to make sure everyone knew it. "'Well, it's not my fault the karma from Basefault isn't here to milk his cows,' Emil said, and began milking them himself. First Roller, then the other six cows. He got six gallons of milk, and his mother put it down in the cellar and made cheese out of it. There was lots of cheese, enough for Emil and the others to eat for a lovely long time. Emil boiled the egg straight away the one lame Lotta had laid on the way home, and put it on the kitchen table in front of his father, who was waiting sullenly for his supper. That's from lame Lotta, said Emil. And next he poured out a glass of fresh milk for his father. That's from Roller, he said. His father ate and drank in silence, while his mother pushed all the loaves of bread into the oven. After milking the cows, Lena returned to the kitchen. She held a hot potato against her aching tooth, which made it ache seven times worse as she knew it would. Now see how you like that, said Lena to her tooth. That's tit for tat. And Alfred laughed. That Krastorp farmer was very nice to give you all those sweets, wasn't he? He said, he's the man you ought to marry, Lena. And Lena snorted. That old goat, he's 50 years old and I'm only 25. Do you think I want someone twice as old as I am? That's all right, said Emil quickly. It doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does, said Lena. It's all right now. But just think, when I'm 50, he'll be 100. And the Lord only knows the trouble I'll have with him then. You reckon according to your light, said Emil's mother, and slammed the oven door on the last load of bread. That's a first-class brush shovel, Emil, she added. When Emil's father had eaten his egg and drunk his milk, Emil said, Aren't I supposed to be going to the tool shed? Emil's father muttered something to the effect that when all was said and done, Emil hadn't really done anything bad enough to sit in the tool shed for. But Emil said, No, 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 you must keep your word. He went solemnly out to the tool shed and began to carve his 129th wooden man. <laughs>